All right, so it's time for the final class, and I saved what I believe to be the best for last, the Barbarian. Let's go ahead and, you know, jump on into it. There is a lot new inside our friend who loves to launch into a rage and charge into battle. So first off, the Barbarian, like several of the other classes that focus on we weapon use, now gets weapon mastery at first level. So just as weapon mastery transforms how the fighter plays and the rogue plays and others, it's going to transform how the barbarian plays depending on which mastery properties the barbarian player decides to unlock for their barbarian. Uh, I'm guessing many barbarians are going to be cleaving quite a bit. <laughs> yes. Uh, but there are also other really tasty options for the barbarian who wants to take their weapon and just wreak havoc. Now, there's more. Uh, we at first level have also made it easier for barbarians to maintain their rage. Yeah. Any of us who you know play barbarians and love playing them know sometimes the complexity of can I keep my rage going? And with that in mind, we've made it so that if there's no one nearby, no enemy nearby that you can attack to keep your rage going, uh, you now have the option of either forcing an enemy to make a saving throw with one of your abilities. Uh, this, by the way, is a nice boon for Dragonborn Barbarians who can keep now their rage going by using their breath weapon because that forces people to make saving throws. Oh, nice. But even better, you also have the fallback option now as a Barbarian of simply burning your bonus action at, once your rage is going to keep the rage, uh, f its fires blazing uh, as you continue the battle. And our thinking here was that since we allow you to activate the rage with a bonus action, why not allow you to keep it going with bonus actions? This has also been... So these first two level one changes right off the bat are fantastic in my opinion. Um, I firmly believe that the Barbarian would be the most played class if they had made Rage a little bit different and simplified it a little bit. Um, the lack of timing for for the Rage in 5e was one of the things that really held it back. And with, with Weapon Mastery now as well, this is going to be a much more playable class. We're going to see a lot more Barbarians at our tables. Um, I think that the Barbarian is probably going to overtake the fighter on most played class now with with this update so far granted we're only two minutes in um but yeah no i i think these are some of the fantastic some of the more fantastic changes they've made out of all of the classes so i mean being able to to extend your rage or the bonus action just makes sense so it's been core to a lot of the design philosophy in the book of this is the identity of this class or the subclass. Why not allow you an easier path towards that identity? Absolutely. In every case, we want to take what is special about a class, protect it, amplify it, and see if there are new ways we can allow you to engage with your class features and feel like in each case you are the most archetypal version of your class. All right, so if I remember correctly, this is the first video that, that the Dungeons and Dragons YouTube channel put out for the new classes. Um, <clears throat> so it's kind of odd that I'm choosing to do it last, but regardless, where was the same energy with um, things like the Paladins, Divine Smite, or just the Rogue in general, or the Ranger? Like, they lost this energy that he was just talking about. They lost it very quickly. <laughs> so with that in mind, barbarians get even more. At level two in danger sense, we've now made it so that Spidey you no sense. longer have to see the source of danger to benefit from this feature. And the only thing that turns danger sense off now is being incapacitated. Yeah, with that change to, to Danger Sense, I will henceforth never refer to it as Danger Sense. It is, now and forever, the Barbarian Spider Sense, because that's what it is.
and I love it. I think it's hilarious, and I know my players are going to join in on calling it Spider Sense. I implore you to do the same, mostly because it will irritate a lot of people, and that is just giggle inducing. Uh, we really wanted to lean in harder to the barbarian having spider this sense, preternatural, preternatural sense of danger. Yeah, spider sense. Uh, and Let's whether go. the barbarian sees it or not, they get you know it's yeah. almost like their spider sense. Something ah, there it is, spider is sense. Happen, yeah. Right? Uh, we've also made it so that barbarians can now participate more meaningfully in non-combat situations with a brand new feature at level three called primal knowledge. Yeah, I love this. Uh, and yeah, I'm so glad to hear that. We had a lot of fun designing it. We had a different version of primal knowledge in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. So even though the name has appeared before, uh, the feature itself is actually uh, a totally new feature in the new player's handbook that now allows you as a barbarian while your rage is going to make certain ability checks that use particular skills and make those checks using strength yeah. regardless of what the normal ability is for those particular ability checks. Just keep in mind. That's another drawback that the Barbarian had is it wasn't like super great out of combat. Um, the, you focus primarily on strength and constitution when making your Barbarian. And um, correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm only human. I can't memorize every single uh, skill. But I don't think there's a single skill that requires constitution. Um, and the number of strength-based skills, um, the chance of you needing them outside of combat is very slim. Don't get me wrong, you'll still need them from time to time. But the chance of you actually needing them is significantly less than, like, intimidation um i think this is really cool it'll it'll let you run intimidation as a strength based check which i already do at my table naturally because it makes a lot more sense for for the big strong hulking berserker of a barbarian to be more intimidating than the smooth talking bard or sorcerer right um intimidation being a charisma check makes sense to some extent but it makes way more sense for it to be either a strength or constitution check because even with constitution you know you're, you're going to be a bigger person with your higher constitution um but it never made sense to me personally to be a charisma check but i don't know exactly what skills you'll be able to run as a strength check while raging or if it'll be any he said certain skills but then didn't name them but i'm sure that it'll be enough that it'll be useful which will make the Barbarian more useful outside of combat while still being the raging behemoth that it has always been in combat, which will make it even more playable for new players. And this is going on during their rage, and their rage always involves them tapping into this deep well of primal power, and it is effectively a supernatural ability that is transforming how they are making these ability checks. Yeah. That uh, before rage was only useful when the barbarian wanted to destroy something. Well, yeah. now the barbarian can also tap into their primal power to give themselves a presence, a control that will assist them in other situations as well. That's perfect. I love this. And it, primal knowledge is actually one of my favorite things that we've done in the barbarian because uh, I love playing this class. And I really like the idea of allowing barbarians to tap into their primary feature and feel like it's benefiting them in every adventuring context. Yeah. And on the cherry on top is this feature also gives the barbarian another skill proficiency uh, okay. because we wanted the barbarian to feel even more well-rounded in terms of their capabilities. Perfect. So we also have a brand new feature at level seven called Instinctive Pounce. And what this allows the Barbarian to do is leap forward uh, or backward or whatever direction the Barbarian wants uh, when activating uh, their rage. When we get up to level nine, we get to one of those new features that gives the Barbarian 
a new way to use one of their core features. And this is a theme we've already touched on uh, in talking about the fighter and the rogue, of us looking for ways to give uh, different classes new ways to use their core shtick. And so Brutal Strike is a new feature that replaces the old Brutal Critical. Brutal Critical in the past did not score particularly well in satisfaction surveys and also unfortunately sometimes never came up for unlucky barbarian players who yeah, almost yeah. never crit. And so for us, it was really begging for replacement, and that's why we've replaced it with Brutal Strike. And what Brutal Strike allows the Barbarian to do is if they are using their Reckless Attack feature, which they still have from uh, their 2014 version, if they're fighting recklessly, you can forego the advantage on your own attack roll, so you're still accepting everyone else has advantage to hit you. Okay to deal even more damage if you manage to hit, and in addition, add on an additional effect. And so we have several effects you can add on that allow you uh, to uh, push someone back and follow them. Uh, also, you can slow someone down. And then at higher level, we give you other ways that you can use Brutal Strike, and the extra damage at higher level goes up. Now, probably the wheels that are turning in your head is this isn't only a cool way to really maximize reckless attacking. It's also a way to combo with your weapon masteries. Yeah. Uh, so the Barbarian can not only start using these cool new effects when they're using their Reckless Attack, they can also create some truly devastating combinations by combining several of these effects with whatever masteries they currently have unlocked. Again, if you want to be very successful at pushing people back, you're using a great club, use weapon mastery on that to push people back, and then on top of that, as a barbarian, you're pushing them back, <laughs> all with that one attack. It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> yes, and, and, and it is meant to be a lot. So this seems to be the only class that they actually seem to be doing what he said they're doing, which is taking with the, the shtick that they're, you know, the gimmick that their class is known for, and just building and building and building on that. And wow, I love it. Um, I've never played a Barbarian as a player. I've made plenty of Barbarians for my NPCs because they fit so well. They're so seamless into any situation. Um, so the fact that they're making these changes to make them better in combat make it more of a powerhouse which it already should have been it should have been able to keep up on damage with the with the paladin in my personal opinion because that's all they do is they beat on people that's that's their gimmick and they're really really pushing that to the forefront of the class like we haven't even gotten into the subclasses yet and they're really like hey this thing's gonna be a raging hulking behemoth and it's going to beat faces in that's it Except it can now do a little bit more outside of combat. But once you're in combat, it's going to beat faces. Okay, cool. Oh, also, here's some new ways to, you know, beat more faces in. Uh, I I love it. I I can't think of anything wrong. And that's a first eight and a half minutes into a video, and I can't think of anything wrong with what they've done. Usually by now, I've complained about most of the video. So this is, this is great. Hot. Yeah. So we also, in the core class, have improved Relentless Rage. Uh, this was a feature that uh, Barbarians had before that helped them stay in the fight uh, when dropped to zero hit points. But in its previous design, it was far too easy for the Barbarian to bounce back but have so few hit points that a monster could then just drop them again. And so all of the features in the player's handbook uh, that are like this, because there are several different classes, subclasses, and even species in the case of the orc that have a feature like this of sort of dodging death. We have looked at all of them and made it so that they are a bit more effective than they were before so that we can lessen the likelihood 
uh, that you will, again, dodge death only, basically dodge one and as you're moving, get hit by another <laughs> because you came back with so few hit points. Now, of course, there's still the risk that you will come back and particularly if, if uh, the monsters really have it out for your character that they will drop you again. But we've again made it so that it's, it, it is not so easy for that to happen. So let's move on to the barbarian subclasses. Yeah, so we have a brand new subclass in the form of the Path of the World Tree. And then we have the Path of the Berserker returning, uh, as well as the Path of the Wild Heart, formerly known as the Path of the Totem Warrior. And then we also have the Path of the Zealot, uh, a subclass that originally appeared in Xanathar's Guide to Everything and has been uh, transformed in its migration from that book uh, to this book. Should we start with the Berserker? Yeah, yeah, it's tried and true and very, the most barbarian barbarian. <laughs> yeah, so the Berserker is the classic barbarian subclass. Now, despite that fact, it was also yeah. a pretty low satisfaction subclass in the past, largely because its main ability, Frenzy, forced the barbarian to gain levels of exhaustion, which made people often hesitant to use their subclass's yeah. main ability. So when we returned to uh, the Berserker for this book, our main goal was redesigning Frenzy, that we need to make it so that this feature feels fun to use and will make people excited to have this subclass. And thankfully, through the Unearthed Arcana uh, process, we got to a place where people who were participating in that process gave the thumbs up and said, yes, the new frenzy is exactly what we want to see. Yeah, this build, this subclass is terrifying. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it's supposed to be. Uh, and uh, really at its heart, uh, frenzy, just like the new brutal strike in the base class, is now building on core features, and in this case, Again, reckless attack, that if you are a berserker and you are using reckless attack, uh, this now allows you the frenzy feature to deal more damage uh, once per turn, and it does not cause you to get exhausted while doing it. The trade-off, uh, as with Brutal Strike, is again, whenever you're using reckless attack, it means other people have advantage to hit you. But that is kind of a bread and butter for the whole barbarian experience. Uh, the bar barbarian experience is literally risk and reward. Exactly. <laughs> so, And we've designed the whole class that way. It's, yeah. it's about you know, how much are you willing to take <laughs> yeah. for, for some spectacular uh, feats of, of martial prowess uh, and, and whatever else you're doing with your rage and your class abilities. But that wasn't the only thing we improved. We also, in the Mindless Rage feature, we made it so that the charmed and frightened conditions aren't just suppressed by that feature, they're now ended by it. Uh, so the Berserker can now uh, just say nope <laughs> to being charmed or frightened uh, because again, their rage is just that powerful. Uh, and then we also took the Berserker's retaliation ability yeah. that used to be at 14th level and moved it down to 10th level uh, because we wanted you to have that fun of doing retaliatory strikes sooner uh, in your barbarian career. And then we took Intimidating Presence, which used to be at 10th level, we moved it up to 14th, and we didn't just move it up, we also made it way more powerful. Uh, previously, Intimidating Presence uh, had you target just one creature and try to freak them out. Now, in contrast, it's as many creatures as you want <laughs> within 30 feet of you, and it's just a bonus action to do it. Perfect. Uh, as you try to strike terror into a bunch of creatures around you, and because it's just a bonus action, it means you can also still do 
your attacks or whatever else you're doing with your action on your turn. All of these revisions combined make the Berserker an extremely formidable subclass and I think now really earns its place as the iconic subclass uh, for the Barbarian. Uh, that brings us to the Path of the Wild Heart. Path of the Wild Heart is a beloved subclass, again, formerly called the Path of the Totem Warrior. Uh, it continues to have its associations uh, with different animal spirits, uh, but we've taken those beloved pieces and given the barbarian player who has this subclass even more flexibility than before. In 2014, when you got the three different features in this subclass where you chose an animal and the benefit associated with it, that was pretty much it. But we've now made it so that for two of these features, you get to choose the animal every time you activate your rage. And then the other feature that gives you a more sort of always on uh, kind of ability that's not connected to your rage, you get to choose the animal associated with that feature every time you finish a long rest. We wanted to do this not only to give the player more choice points as they're playing a wild heart, but we also wanted you to be able to lean deeper into this fantasy of connecting with these different primal spirits. Uh, because we felt before you were kind of well, I made this choice, and but I never do again. Yeah. And we really want you to have this feeling of like, today I'm communicating with the bear. Yeah. But tomorrow I might be communicating with the eagle or with the lion or with the ram. We also changed the animal names because we wanted to make it clear that these choices are not connected to each other. We In the 2014 Player's Handbook, we told you that if you chose, for instance, bear for one of the features, you were not required to choose bear for the other ones. But we found that even though we said that, people seeing the same animal name showing up often felt they had to pick the same one yeah. all the way through. So that's one of the reasons why we made it so that every single one of the animal options is now different. None of them repeat. Perfect. Uh, so that it's super duper clear you're in no way having to pick the same animal all the way down because now it's impossible to. Uh, now in the process, in addition to giving more flexibility, we also modified several of the options and the options at level six got particularly improved. Uh, we wanted to make them more useful to you in a typical adventure. So now, for instance, if you pick salmon uh, uh, at level six, you oh, get a swim so speed. If you pick panther, you get a climb speed. And if you pick the owl, you're going to have really good dark vision. All right. I'm sorry. I got I got to say something. I find it ridiculous that nothing has a base swim speed. Like, I, I get it. I get it to to a, a point but like um your adventures you you adventure you do quests to, to save people you roam and and you know how to swim you know how to swim i think it's ridiculous that that you have to be a certain class or hit a certain level or take a certain feat to get a swim speed it 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 would make more sense if base you have a walking speed you got your base speed and you've got a swim speed and there's feats that increase your swim speed or there's certain class features that that increase your swim speed this is just beating a dead horse it has nothing to do with the barbarian it's 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 my gripe with D D as a whole the fact that there's no swim speed unless you earn it through a feat or a subclass or whatever when you're sometimes 200 years old and you've been adventuring for the last 50 plus years and you somehow don't know how to swim, I, I don't know. And we, again, we wanted you That's to- That's just my thing, I guess. Get some features at this level that would help you a bit more, particularly in the exploration tier of the game. And early on. Yeah. I am very excited for this new subclass. Uh, it is the Path of the World Tree. All right, so 
I like the changes they made with Path of the Wild Heart. I do. Um, I'll still probably always call it the Totem Warrior because I think Totem Warrior sounds better, sounds more badass than the Wild Heart. But um, <clears throat> I think it's cool. The changes they made are great. Just having each uh, a set of, of feats that you could take have different animal names is absolutely fantastic because I saw what he was talking about plenty of times. People go, oh, I'm going with the bear at third level, you know, because of how absolutely tanky and turdly it makes you you know you get resistance from everything except for physical or psychic damage and then they just pick bear for the rest of it of their levels just because they think they have to and it's ridiculous um so changing the names is cool uh it's, i i don't would i'd be hard pressed to call it necessary but it's cool don't get me wrong i do love it um and I know I didn't I didn't pause it at uh, the Path of the Berserker. I'm trying to truck through this as quickly as possible because I got to make at least one more video for you guys um, before I go on vacation. But that shouldn't stop me from being thorough. Path of the Berserker, the changes they made are fantastic. I like the change Frenzy. Don't get me wrong. The fact that Frenzy gave you an exhaustion point, in my personal experience from what I've seen, was never a reason why it didn't get used as often. It's because it... It wasn't as buff as it could have been for that big of a drawback. The ex point of exhaustion wasn't enough of a drawback drawback to not use it. It's just the bonus it gave wasn't it wasn't equal. It wasn't equal, and that that's it. They could have kept the the exhaustion point. People would have been mad, but they could have kept it it causing a point of exhaustion if they had just made it better, you know. Um, but Path of the Berserker, I think, is going to be a lot more popular of a subclass now. It's going to get picked a lot more. And honestly, I'm here for it. But let's see the Path of the Wild Tree. Three, very much you know, rooted in Idrisil and legends like that. And the Path of the World Tree, World Tree, like sorry, the I Path said Wild of Tree, the didn't Zealot, I? are both about the barbarian turning their gaze outward to the broader cosmos. The Berserker and the wild heart both really lean into sort of the classic barbarian fantasy of primal power either within oneself or within nature whereas the path of the world tree is about connecting to the world tree that in DD, just like in norse mythology connects to all of the worlds of the DD multiverse or you can choose Path of the Zealot to connect to gods. And that's why I say those two subclasses are about, again, turning your gaze outward instead of uh, inward or to, to nature. And the Path of the World Tree, because it isn't, this isn't just a regular tree. This is not you know, a tree that's gonna put just bark on you or something like that. This is the tree that connects one world to the other. That's why uh, this, path is especially magical among these paths at the highest level of the subclass is going to allow the barbarian to teleport uh, as the barbarian taps into that extra dimensional power of the tree but it also uh, gives the barbarian ways to support their party uh, by uh, tapping into the vitality of this great tree to give themselves temporary hit points or give others temporary hit points. It's a tank that makes everyone tank. Exactly. Yeah. And that also gets at that this, this subclass can really fill a different role in a group than, say, the Berserker. The Berserker is really good at dishing out the hurt. And really, any barbarian is, yeah. but the but but the well, they better be. especially leans into that. Uh, the wild heart can do that as well, but with the wild heart, you can you have a sort of menu of options to customize yourself. Path of the World Tree is really about leaning into uh, barbarian as tank, uh, because not only can you give yourself and others resilience, move yourself and your friends at high level through teleportation. But you also have the really fun ability to use the roots of the world tree to point to your foe and yeah. say, nope, you're not running away, come back. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. and that, that has been an especially fun thing to see in play tests is this is the barbarian who is kind of the, the worst enemy of 
the foe who wants to always run away. Yeah, it's a nightmare. The barbarian is just like, nope, come right back here. Come over here, ability, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and so really able to uh, help their party. And on top of it, they also gain an ability to extend their reach yeah. uh, with their melee weapons uh, by having like the roots sort of extending from their weapons to, to make it even easier to hit someone far away. And the, the world tree gives them the ability even to uh, uh, fiddle around with the mastery properties that they're using with their weapon strikes. Very hard barbarian to escape, but the hardest barbarian ever to escape. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I can reach further, I can teleport to you, I can teleport you to me, <laughs> yeah. Again, at high level, I can teleport my whole party to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hello, yeah. you know, you thought, <laughs> the enemy thought they got away from the whole group, and, and no, the path of the world tree barbarian is like, hi, here we all are. Uh, so coming from Xanathar's Guide, we've kind of imported the path of the zealot. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, I I think it's cool. I do. Um, I I love the temporary hit points. Being able to give temporary hit points to your allies, fine, whatever. Um, the teleportation makes it feel like somebody wanted to play a wizard, but didn't want to die from you know D four damage. Um, and I mean, yeah, you don't get all the same spells, but it's like it, I don't know. I, I guess it makes sense as far as, you know, the world tree goes. Um, it just, to be fair, the, the just the name, Path of the World Tree, just kind of makes it seem like a druid more than a barbarian. But I do understand from a lore point why it works, and I don't have a, an overall problem with it. It's just odd for a barbarian to be able to teleport their entire party, you know? I don't know. I like it though. I do. Um, they've got a little bit more meat on their bones, so they could take more of a beating, and they can make it so their allies can take a beating. And I think that's fantastic. I think that's something that the barbarian, maybe not making the rest of their allies tankier, but making themselves tankier, absolutely something a barbarian should be able to do. So overall, I think the subclass will see use, but it's not going to see as much use, I think, as uh, the Wild Heart and Path of the Zealot, which we're about to go over. But this is the very divine focused. Yes. So Path of the Zealot is all about being a barbarian whose rage is rooted in the might of the gods. And this barbarian could choose a single god to serve, a whole pantheon, or just divine power itself. And this barbarian, just as they could in Xanathar's Guide, you know, they have their Divine Fury, where they can deal extra damage. But we have done some redesign and enhancement in this subclass in the process of bringing it over from Xanathar's Guide. Uh, one of the big changes was to the Warrior of the Gods feature, which before basically just made it easier for you to be raised from the dead. And um, I... I mean, just full disclosure, I am not a huge fan of when we make features that rely on you dying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so I had us change this feature. Yeah. Um, and you now get a pool of dice uh, that you can use to heal yourself. It's almost like having uh, your own version of Lay on Hands yeah. as a barbarian. But unlike the paladin who can use that ability to heal others, this feature is a bit more selfish and yeah. is all about keeping this barbarian in the fight as they channel divine power and just keep going and going and going. We also took a look at the fanatical focus feature that the zealot had before. Uh, it gave the barbarian a reroll. And as we've done with several other reroll abilities in the new player's handbook, we now also give you a bonus to the reroll. Uh, we wanted to increase the likelihood that if you use this feature, that it will have a better chance of turning a failure into a success. I mean, the reroll in now, and of the, itself the increases your chance of success or failure. The area where we did the most redesign is in the capstone ability. Uh, at level 14, you now get uh, Rage of the Gods, and it 
no longer requires you to drop to zero hit points to gain its benefit. Because this was, unfortunately, the Zealot previously had two features that relied on you dropping. <laughs> Great. Or, yeah. or in this case, avoiding dropping uh, to be activated. Now, instead, you can simply activate the Rage of the Gods when you activate your Rage, and it gives you various divine powers while it's active. You can fly oh. uh, for a certain amount of time, really tasty damage resistance, uh, and you also now have the ability to thwart other people's deaths. So if other people are dying around you, you can use your reaction and you can try to save them. And so you now also can provide some of your survivability to others around you. And so again, there's a little bit of paladin here. A little bit? But with a distinctively sure. barbarian flavor because it's still, sure. at its heart, the zealot. And this is was about just only a little bit of gushers. And that's it for the barbarian. That's it. I mean, it's. it's Look, I understand not liking a feature that requires your hit points hit zero. It's uncomfortable. It didn't stop people from playing the goddamn subclass, though, because those features were broken as hell. It was, it was, in my opinion, it was a perfectly fair, perfectly even draw, you know, risk to reward. Like, yeah, your health is going to hit zero, so you might drop, but look at how broken you're getting for the next, what, eight turns, give or take? You're going to finish the battle. The combat's going to be over, and then you'll drop after combat's over, and one of your allies will pick you up. It's fine. Don't worry about it, right? It, Rage of the Gods was already a fairly broken skill. The only thing that made it seem less broken was the fact that your hit points had to hit zero. Now they not only made it so that you get to choose to activate it as a bonus action, but they made it better. And while I'm not going to complain about that too much, it's weird that they're going to break it even more when it's already so broken. It was already... Um, so infuriating for for dms to have to try and work around this broken ass skill that basically acts as second wind but not really you know it's and now they've got a fly speed like it, hmm. i love the path of the zealot i do in fact a lot of my npcs that i made as barbarians use the path of the zealot it's cool it's got a lot of cool features it's got a cool lore background it's it's cool <laughs> there was no need for them to further break rage of the gods it was not necessary if anybody's going to play a singular class through to level 20 it'll be the barbarian and i don't i still don't see that happening but they'll at the very least play it till the capstone at 14 before they finally multi-class they might multi-class in between sure but they're going to make sure their barbarian barbarian level hits 14 just for rage of the gods that is a broken ass ability that people are going to utilize and and I guarantee you if you if you want to piss off your dungeon master path of the zealot barbarian get to level 14 abuse the shit out of that they will hate you they'll also probably try to find a way to kill you but it's going to be really hard be really hard um but that that was that was the barbarian class. I'm sorry it took so long. Uh, I know the the new player's handbook is supposed to come out in uh, a month. I want to say September 13th, which as of recording is exactly one month from today. Um, I know this is gonna post on the 14th, but I, I recorded it and and whatnot the day before. Uh, but yeah, that's that was it for all the the classes. Um, they've got some other videos that I'm gonna go over, like the, the monster manual and the dungeon master's guide. Uh, I'll go over those shortly. Um, but remember, if you learned anything here, if you if you if I made you laugh a little bit, go ahead and and like and subscribe for more content because I've got I've got a lot more that I'm getting ready to churn out. I promise you. Um, but thanks for watching.